The year is 1939, and Finland has just been invaded by Russia, beginning what would later be called the Winter War. Not long after that, French mathematician André Weil is arrested by the Finnish police under suspicion of espionage. The evidence against him is pretty damning. He is found with a letter written in Russian, a false passport under the name Nicholas Bourbaki, and a peculiar invitation to the wedding of Nicholas Bourbaki's only daughter, Betty, to the world-renowned lion hunter, H. Petard. Even more suspicious, the invitation is full of complex mathematical jargon. For example, the wedding ceremony itself is referred to as a trivial isomorph. This is a mathematical term for when two sets have a one-to-one -one correspondence. The Finnish authorities understandably mistake this invitation for a coded message and Andre Weil is set for execution. The truth about Nicholas Bourbaki his daughter Betty, and that famous lion hunter H. Petard, is even stranger though. All of them are imaginary. But Nicholas Bourbaki actually did exist, at least in a manner of speaking. He had published multiple essays in academic journals and written 12 textbooks on a wide range of topics such as topology, algebra, set theory, and analysis. Despite all of this though, Bourbaki didn't really exist, not strictly speaking. Bourbaki was a pen name, but not only for Andre Weil, it was shared by an entire secret society of mathematicians. This group went to great lengths to make Bourbaki seem like a real person. They gave him a fake baptism certificate, a godmother, and even a daughter. Remember Betty from the wedding invitation? They also tried to enroll Bourbaki in as many academic societies as they could, including the American Mathematical Society. This application, however, was rejected, claiming, the American Mathematical Society has two classes of membership, individual and institutional. I understand that this is not an application from an individual. If Bourbaki had most of the world fooled, how could it be that the AMS was onto their secret identity? Enter Ralph P. Boas, the executive editor of the American Mathematical Society's academic journal. Ralph P. Boas also had his own secret mathematical society, inspired by Nicholas Bourbaki. The name of his group was H. Petard. Yes, that same famous lion hunter. Hence the picture of this lion in the photograph. The name H. Petard came from an obscure line from the play Hamlet, the engineer hoist with his own petard. The reason why he's called a famed lion hunter is because H. Petard wrote various poems, spoofs, and mathematical satire in prestigious academic journals. Their most famous piece was an article in 1938 called a contribution to the mathematical theory of big game hunting. This proposed over a dozen solutions for catching lions using only the laws of mathematics and physics. For example, there's the method of inverse geometry. We place a spherical cage in the desert, enter it, and lock it. We then perform an inversion with respect to the cage. The lion is then in the interior of the cage, and we are outside. Or there's my personal favorite, the Schrodinger method. At any given moment, there is a positive probability that there is a lion in the cage. Sit down and wait. If you're wondering how it is that a fictional mathematician like H. Petard came to be betrothed to another fictional mathematician's fictional daughter, that was suggested by this guy, our old friend Andre Weil. While Weil was visiting the H. Petard group in America, he proposed this idea of them getting married as sort of an elaborate joke on the mathematical society. The plan worked well. The wedding was celebrated in academic journals. It even inspired the following poem full of mathematical puns called Hymn to Hymen. The wind was blowing soft, the sun was sending, 
along their space-time geodesics wending. Millions of photons, orange, green, and yellow, making the scene enchanting, warm, and mellow. As by reflection and refraction they're diverted, into the eye and so to sight converted. Hector Petard, that noted big game hunter, feared that his intellect was growing blunter. A variation problem had him nettled. He could not see how it could well all be settled. Who was it maximized charm, wit, and grace, and was the fairest of the human race, yet minimized under those same conditions all horrible and spiteful dispositions? Cupid from his pedestal in Piccadilly was duly energized and willy-nilly. I should note here that Blanche Descartes, the mathematician famous for this poem, was also a pen name used by a secret mathematical society in the UK called the Trinity Four. But let's go back to Andre Weil, who's still trapped in Finland. Now first we have the mysterious wedding invitation. Now we know that Monsieur Nicolas Bourbaki was actually Andre Weil, and by extension, so was Betty Bourbaki. This explains the false passport as well. We also know that Hector Petard was actually Ralph P. Boaz, head of the American Math Society. As a matter of fact, this other name, Monsieur Ersatz Stanislaus Pondicherry, that was Boaz's personal pen name. But what about that Russian letter? And what was Whale doing in Finland in the first place? Well, that letter was the only piece of this story that may have actually been genuine. It was an invitation addressed to Nicholas Bourbaki to come and speak at Moscow University, and it seems like that invitation was sincere. When war broke out in Europe, Whale fled from France as a conscientious objector, and it's likely that he took that Russian letter as a possible excuse in case he was caught by the French police. Him entering Finland just as it was invaded by Russia was a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Somehow or other, Whale was able to convince the Finnish authorities to deport him to the neighboring country of Sweden instead of executing him. He later found his way home from there. Although Burbaki never technically existed, his contributions to mathematics are profound, and his textbooks are still used to this day. In fact, it's rumored that he still has an office at the École Normale Supérieure in Paris. If you like this story and you want to read more, why don't you check out the comic book version that I made called Bourbaki. It's printed on something called a Tetra Tetra Flexicon. That's a single piece of paper that's folded in just such a way that you can actually get four different pages just by folding it. It's kind of like a puzzle and a comic book at the same time, and it's available from my website. Click the link below in the description 